Anderson connectors are the connector of choice for making a connection between a truck and RV for DC to DC charging, but there's also smaller versions available for smaller things like lights or fans or outlets. And you can also see Anderson connectors in use on the front of a lot of portable power boxes. And teaching you how to crimp and assemble Anderson connectors is exactly what we're going to cover today in lesson number eight of this Wired Terminals playlist. My name is Nate and welcome to the Explorers Life Mobile, Marine, and Off-Grid Electrical Academy. Now, I've already talked about how to cut wire and how to strip wire back in lessons 4.2 through 4.3 of this academy. So in this video, I'm just going to assume you already know how to do all of that and only talk about crimping and assembly of Anderson connectors. Let's get started. What are the parts of an Anderson connector? Anderson connectors come with two electrical terminal pins and a connector housing. The electrical terminal pins are crimped onto the ends of the wire, and then the pins then snap into the connector housing. What crimper is best for Anderson connectors? For Anderson connectors 10 gauge and smaller, I like to use non-insulated ratcheting crimpers, the same ones we use for PV connectors. The jaws of this crimper have a U shape on one side and an M shape on the other side. And notice that these Anderson terminal pins have a little break or split on one side of the barrel connector. To crimp this terminal, I'm just going to put the side of the terminal that has the little break of the barrel into the crimper with the tooth or the M pushing on that break. And so whenever I get that lined up and squeeze down, it separates and then pushes the terminal down and so it pushes the top part of the terminal down into the middle of where the wire would be creating a really really secure connection and here's how it looks with wire put the terminal into the crimper put the wire into the terminal squeeze the crimper until the crimper releases and then inspect the terminal to make sure it looks nice and squished and from there, you can give the terminal a tug to make sure that it's not going to come loose and it should withstand a fair amount of power to pull the terminal off the wire. Now crimping Anderson connectors larger than 10 gauge, like six gauge here or big four out lugs here. So it's going to be the exact same process, just using a different crimper. And the crimper that I like for that is just this battery lug crimper from Timco. And if you need a refresher on how this crimper works, review lesson 4.05 of this academy where we covered how to crimp wire lugs. Let's move on to assembling the connectors. How to make an Anderson connector. Once the pins have been crimped onto the wire, they can simply be pushed into place, but they have to go in the right direction. Notice how there's a little metal retaining plate at the bottom of the connector housing. The hook of the terminal pin needs to grab onto that plate. So put the wire into the terminal and push it until it clicks into place. Like so. And then you can just visually inspect it to make sure that the hook is completely covering that retaining pin. And as a better graphic, because that one's really small, I've got this comically large Anderson connector over here, and it's a little easier to see the retaining plate down in the bottom of the connector. And then here is the pin with the hook, and there's no wire on it, but the process is the same. You'd push it in there. You can see the pin go up and ugh, it's kind of hard to push all the way over that retaining plate. And here's an illustration of how that actually looks. So the process of pushing these pins into these connectors is the same regardless of what size of connector that you're using. And also just take special care to make sure that the correct wire is on the correct side of the housing, you know, red to red and black to black, if you're using that, or some of these also have polarity markings right on the housing as denoted with a positive and negative. 
And if you do mess up, it is possible to, you know, get a screwdriver and sort of push that pin down, but it's sort of like playing a game of operation and I'm probably not gonna be able to do it here on camera because, uh, well, it's hard to see and it's difficult. So uh, good luck, but it can be done. What are some common use cases for Anderson connectors? So we typically use Anderson connectors for the DC to DC charging circuit to connect four or six gauge wires from the truck to the trailer. Now we've also used them in our van to add lights and power to modular cabinets in our transit camper van with Anderson connector wall plates. So for a quick disconnect option for low voltage DC power, these are pretty great, really flexible, and they actually come in sizes all the way up to huge 4 out versions, small ones for 16 and 18 gauge wire, or these guys for six gauge wire. Now we're gonna be putting Anderson connectors on a lot of wires throughout the rest of this academy, so be sure to bookmark this lesson for future reference and come back to it if you need a refresher because going forward, I'm just going to assume that you now know how to crimp and assemble an Anderson connector. Next up, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about crimping ferrules, so click up here to watch and I'll see you over there.